Hi, and welcome into Real Conversations. I am Thomas Manning with the Real to Real International Film Festival. I am so grateful to be joined today by Rachel Morrison, the director of the documentary short Elvers. Thank you so much for joining us today, Rachel. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yes, ma'am. And uh, if you want to just start things out by telling us a little bit about your background of filmmaking and uh, what has led you to making this documentary short. Um, well, this is actually my first uh, documentary, Elfers. And um, I have also been working on a feature film, so that's still in the works right now. Um, <clears throat> I got into the field, um, I have a background in art and art history and then worked in libraries for many years. So kind of combined my, um, you know, creative interests with my research background and put that into documentary filmmaking. So I hope to make more shorts and features awesome. in the future. Yeah. And what was it about this particular subject with these, these eels that are called elvers? What was it about this that grabbed your attention and, you know, made you think, Hey, I want to tell the story and want to put it in the form of a documentary. Um, well, like both of the projects I'm working on, it was a story that I discovered uh, conducting research for something entirely different. And um, I did not know about the elver fishery or the word elver to describe a baby eel um, or, you know, anything about the story. So when I discovered it, I just thought, this is an amazing story. And um, it needs to be told. So that's what drew me in. Um, of course, the environmental aspects and, um, you know, global food industry, um, and then also the black market uh, criminal aspects I found interesting as well. So, yeah. And um, <laughs> you, there are so many different perspectives. Uh, and people that you've tracked down to interview for this documentary. So how did you find these people and uh, what made you want to, you know, tell their story specifically? Um, that's a good question. I actually went with my crew to Maine. Um, we knew about uh, Bill William Sheldon, um, who had um, already been um, caught and arrested for illegally trafficking elvers. Um, he hadn't um, gone to court yet, so he was actually still selling, um, not selling, I'm sorry, but um, buying elvers um, the year that we went out, which was 2017 now. That was the first year we went out. So we just, um, we just, we flew to Maine from Los Angeles and drove up to Ellsworth and uh, went to his brick and mortar um, buying shop station, so to speak. Um, and I just went in and, and talked to him and we kind of met people through him. And then also um, met most of the people who are in the film. The very first night that we were there, we went down to um, the river the Union River, which runs through the town, um, and just started filming people from far away um, who were fishing and talking to them. And I didn't want to, I actually didn't really want to reach out to anybody beforehand and start any kind of commotion. I thought if I just met people there on the ground, I'd be more likely to garner relationships and, and, and film with them. Since it's so, you know, kind of secretive and there's a black market. None of the people except for Bill, um, you know, were participating in the black market who I interviewed. They're all legal fishermen and fisherwomen. Yeah, and it's pretty crazy. Uh, I think one of the guys mentioned that the elvers are now like the second most valuable commercial fish in Maine outside of lobster. Yeah. I mean, that is just a crazy statistic. Yeah, I'm sure most people don't know that. Yeah. I certainly did not know that. So this documentary, is it something that you could have seen yourself stretching out into a feature length or do you think you kind of told everything that you wanted to within the 15 minute short runtime? Um, at the time that I was making it, um, I set out to make a short, but I certainly could um, envision 
making it into a larger project, you know, trying to get funding. I think it would be really fascinating to follow um, the, the Elvers from Maine to Asia um, because they're purchased by buyers in Asia. Um, and then they go to uh, factory farms and they're raised to adulthood there. And then they're, um, you know, exported all over the world. So it'd be interesting, I think, to go to China, Japan, see, you know, maybe even come back to the United States, because a lot of the eels come back to the U U.S. after they're farm raised in China, even though they're caught in Maine, they might go to China and go back to Maine or to California or Ohio, you know, wherever. Um, so I think there's a lot more to the story than what I was able to tell in, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Definitely. But now the world has changed a lot. So <laughs> I don't know. That is true. <laughs> and uh, so I was looking through some of your credits and it looks like you have a background in some like true crime documentaries as well. And, um, you know, kind of historical documentaries. So which side do you prefer? Do you prefer the more environmental nature based or um, the kind of um, true crime historical side of documentary filmmaking? Um, well, I should say that I, I work as an archival producer. So I do research and I find archival materials for documentary television series and also feature films. So um, that's the, the work that you're referring to. Um, so that's kind of like a different part of the documentary um, filmmaking process that I'm a part of. Um, that's sort of what I do for my bread and butter. Um, in terms of my own personal work like this, um, I think the, the environmental issues are the most important. The true crime aspects are kind of what makes the story, you know, pulls you into the story. Um, and then of course has to do with the environmental issues as well. So I think it's important. It's an important story, even though it's so kind of obscure and, you know, we don't eat a lot of eel in the United States or think about it. This story is the story of so much food that we eat. So to think about the environmental impact of this small thing as just one of, you know, thousands of things is yeah important and compelling for sure and uh so what are some you know elements of filmmaking uh that you've taken from your background as a researcher and that you applied in your production and development of this documentary short well i love doing research so um like i said i worked in libraries for a while and i do research for other documentaries so i just dove into the research for this um pretty heavily um that's really fun for me and so that's how i was able to pinpoint you know the specific person who i wanted to interview bill uh sheldon and you know found out about ellsworth which is um sort of a hub for the fishery there are a lot of people who fish there because there's a river that runs through the town um where the the elvers swim up so that seemed like a good central place to go and sort of um, you know, let the story branch out from that specific location. Um, but people are fishing all over Maine and um, there are about 10 people who fish in, in and around Charleston, South Carolina as well. That's sort of an even more unknown fishery. And um, I actually found out about the story from some folks who live there, um, but because it's so small, everybody is extremely competitive and extremely secretive. So I didn't think that would be a good place to go to film. And uh, what does it mean to have the film festival circuit for you to have your films distributed? Uh, because otherwise you might not get as much of a wide audience. So uh, what does it meant to you to have film festivals readily available? Yeah, film festivals are amazing and they really are one of the only venues for short documentaries. So um, certainly the only venue for short documentaries in theaters um, when we were all going to theaters. So it's amazing. Um, being able to go in person is so fun. You get to network with people and, and see your, your film on, a, on the big screen. Um, now, of course, things have changed, but 
you know, festivals have always been like the big champions of, of shorts, which I love. And it's, it's always good to see things that you really wouldn't see elsewhere. And uh, before we wrap things up, anything else you want to share about the production of the documentary or anything you want the audience to take away from the story? I think, you know, there's a lot of fun, um, eccentric folks in the film, but, um, you know, the story, hopefully the takeaway is, you know, what I've been talking about earlier, just the environmental aspects of the fishery, what happens when people have, um, still have a demand for something that is, you know, about to go extinct, um, how that affects money and greed and, the local economy, you know, it stokes the local economy. It's, it's really complicated. So hopefully people will think about that and, you know, dive into the story more because obviously I couldn't tell um, the entire story in, in the short amount of time that I had. So it's just a slice of the story. <laughs> and uh, if people want to keep up with your work, whether it be through social media or a website you have, where can people find you? Uh, rachelmorrison.com and Rachel spelled R-A-C-H-A-E-L um, M-O-R-R-I-S-O-N dot com. Awesome. Well, Rachel, thank you so much for joining us today on Real Conversations. We're glad to have you and we're definitely uh, glad to be showcasing your film at Real to Real. Yeah, thank you. I'm excited to have it screened with you guys. Yep. And uh, Thomas Manning signing off for Rachel Morrison. Thank you guys for joining us today on Real Conversations. <laughs>